You should never say never. You should also never say mayonnaise is good because you would be dead wrong. <clears throat> the argument goes something like this. Sure, the House might impeach President Donald Trump sometime later this year for his pressure campaign against the Ukrainians, but the Senate is never going to convict him and remove him from office. So what's the point? Subtle brand reinforcement there. See what I did? <laughs> Now that conventional wisdom does make some sense because, well, math. There are 53 Republicans in the Senate currently and 47 Democrats when you count independents who also caucus with Democrats. Now in order to remove Trump from office, 67 senators would have to vote to do so, meaning you would need every Democrat and a 20 person Republican revolt. Not very likely, or is it? Okay, here's what I know. Trump's election and presidency proves this. Never assume anything. Politics, especially in this age of social media and of our first reality TV president, both A, moves really fast, and B, is massively unpredictable. And it's not just that we live in unpredictable times. It's that the looming cloud of an election tends to change things significantly. So with 2020 almost here, Republicans are now in actual danger of losing their Senate majority next November. Consider these numbers. 23 Republicans are up for re-election next November as compared to just 12 Democrats. If Democrats can net three seats and win the White House, or four seats if Trump gets re-elected, they retake control of the Senate. Now, of those 23 Republicans, only two, that's Maine's Susan Collins and Colorado's Cory Gardner, hold seats that Hillary Clinton won in 2016. But, and this is important, a slew of other potentially vulnerable Republicans sit in states where Trump won by only single digits. And that list includes Arizona's Martha McSally, Georgia's David Perdue, Iowa's Joni Ernst, Texas's John Cornyn, and the open seat being vacated by Johnny Isaacson in Georgia. Now, in normal political circumstances, people like Cornyn likely don't have all that much to worry about, but we are not in normal political circumstances. Donald Trump's job approval is in the low 40s at best. A recent Fox News poll showed a majority of Americans support the impeachment and removal of the president from office. Which, of course, doesn't mean that Cornyn or Ernst or Purdue are in immediate peril. What it does mean, though, is that those senators, in addition to Cory Gardner and Susan Collins, are going to be very, very aware of even slight changes in the political environment in regards to impeachment. And if you look around, cracks within the GOP have already begun to emerge in the issue. Florida Congressman Francis Rooney said he would consider supporting a formal impeachment inquiry, and then promptly announced his retirement. Former Ohio Governor John Kasich, a longtime Trump critic, supports the impeachment and removal of Trump. Utah Senator Mitt Romney told The Atlantic that he is preparing for the possibility of a Senate trial of Trump, but added, quote, at this stage, I am strenuously avoiding trying to make any judgment, end quote. That must be strenuous. Now, even South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, who has been one of Trump's most loyal and outspoken allies, acknowledged recently to Axios that he is keeping an open mind on the issue. If you could show me that, you know, Trump actually was engaging in a quid pro quo outside the phone call, that would be very disturbing. So what those cracks suggest is that if this impeachment inquiry starts to look worse and worse for Trump, it's not all that unreasonable then that the most endangered of Senate incumbents could break away in an attempt to save their own political careers. So playing this out, stay with me here. Let's say five-ish Republican senators led by Susan Collins and Cory Gardner did indicate they would vote to remove Trump from office, okay? What's to say that the pragmatic elements of the party, I'm talking about Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, Missouri's Roy Blunt, Florida's Marco Rubio, Nebraska's Ben Sass, and yes, Utah's Mitt Romney, wouldn't sense Trump's weakness and jump at the chance to get him out. Notice that there are lots and lots of Republican senators who have studiously avoided saying anything at all about Trump and Ukraine so far, holding their powder and all that. So the question then would become, what is the tipping point at which all but the most loyal Trump allies in the Senate, or those in states where Trump remains beloved, are willing to come out against him? Now that tipping point may be hard to imagine right now, especially given that congressional Republicans have kowtowed to President Trump at every turn over his first three years in office. 
But there is always a tipping point in politics, a moment past which the impossible suddenly seems sort of inevitable. Again, and I can't say this strongly enough, we are not there yet. And if past his prologue with Republicans' blind allegiance to Trump, we may never get there. But anyone who tells you we will never get there must have forgotten, well, the last four years or so. And that is the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.